Hey, what's up guys, Alex here, and what we're gonna talk about in this video is the math behind this promotion on FanDuel. First touchdown score bonus. Um, so with this promotion, you place $25 on a first touchdown score in a specific game, and you get $5 in site credit for each touchdown your player's team scores. So, you know, if we bet $25 on Cooper Cup to score the first touchdown, the Rams score four touchdowns, we get a bonus of $20 from FanDuel. They score five touchdowns, we get a bonus of $25 from FanDuel. Um, so there is the caveat that there's a maximum bonus of $25. So if the Rams score six touchdowns, we still only get $25. But for the sake of this video, we'll again, just kind of ignore this maximum bonus part. Um, I also messed up. I didn't realize this was the game next week. I thought this was the Rams-Titans game tomorrow, so I went through the math and the example with the Rams-Titans game. So, for the sake of this video, just imagine this is the Rams-Titans game, and we're trying to determine, okay, should we even bet this promotion? Is it even profitable, and which player should we bet on? So, the first question is, what team should the player, you know, be on that we're betting on? You only get $5 in credit for each touchdown your player's team scores. So in this Titans-Rams game, if we bet on, you know, Cooper Cup to score the first touchdown and the Rams score zero touchdowns and the Titans score three, our bonus from FanDuel is zero dollars. So what makes the most sense is you want to bet on the team that is more likely to win, right? If they're more likely to win, they're more likely to score more touchdowns. So you can see that the Rams are minus 300 favorites in tomorrow's game versus the Titans. So it makes sense to bet on a player from the Rams. Um, FanDuel actually even has markets for this. So here's their first touchdown score markets and odds, which we just put into this Google sheet right here. But what you can see is um, FanDuel actually has markets on how many touchdowns teams are going to score. So you can see that the Rams their projected amount of touchdowns is roughly 3.5, right? The over is over 3.5 minus 122, under 3.5 minus 104, whereas for the Titans, it's over under 2.5. So by betting on a player from the Rams, you're expected in expectancy, you're getting an additional $5 in FanDuel because the Rams are expected to score roughly one more touchdown than the Titans are. They're the better team, right? They're minus 300 favorites. So the market is implying the Rams are going to score an average roughly 3.5 touchdowns in the game, right? Which means our expected bonus from FanDuel with $5 in site credit, you know, per touchdown that our player's team scores is, um, we're expecting 3.5 touchdowns, so our expected bonus is 1750. 3.5 times five right? And if you were to bet on a player from the Titans, your expected bonus from FanDuel goes down to 12.5, right? So then you'd only be expecting a bonus of 1250 from FanDuel. So it does matter what player you bet on because, you know, you ideally want to bet on a player from the better team. So um, what we're going to do next is we are going to take all of FanDuel's markets, we're going to put them in this Google sheet, and we're going to do the same thing with DraftKings. So we have the Titans-Rams game, we copy all these markets, we put them into this Google Sheet just so we can compare odds side by side. Um, so what you can see is Cooper Cup, he's plus 500, and plus 500 implies a win rate of 16.7%. So to break even, betting plus 500s, you have to win roughly 16.7% of the time, right? And that's just if you want to go to an odds converter calculator, so Cooper Cup was plus 500, 16.67%, which is what you see here. Um, and this is important for determining the hold of the market, right? The juice of the market. Um, so what we can do, we put all their markets in here, FanDuel, DraftKings, we get all of the implied probabilities and we sum them up. So if we sum up the implied probabilities on FanDuel, we get, you know, 153%, whereas for DraftKings, we get 127%. Um, both of these numbers are greater than one, which means that the market has VIG, right? It has juice, juice baked into it, which makes sense. Um, so with this number, the implied, the sum of implied probabilities, we can back out the hold of the market. So it's just one minus one over the sum of implied probabilities. 
And for FanDuel, it turns out to be 34.7%. And for DraftKings, it's 21.2%. So what do these numbers mean? And, you know, is this a good thing or a bad thing? So the hold of the market means that betting blindly into FanDuel's market on first touchdown scores, you are expected to lose 34.7%, right? They are markets with tons of juice and tons of vig or tons of VIG baked into them, right? These are markets that are very hard to generate a profit on because they have so much juice, right? Such a high um, VIG baked into them. And you can see FanDuel's is a lot higher than DraftKings. Um, So if you're betting first, if you just like betting first touchdown scores, you don't mind losing a little bit to the VIG, you'd much rather place your bets on DraftKings on average compared to FanDuel just because, you know, FanDuel has a lot more juice baked into it. Um, So what this would mean is if we were every week just betting $100 randomly um, on a first touchdown score in a game, we would be expecting a loss of $35 per $100 we bet. FanDuel has a lot of juice baked into their market. Um, So this isn't something we'd obviously bet unless there were a promotion attached to uh, uh, betting on the first touchdown score in a game. So... What we can do now is we can go through the math of this promotion. So we're betting on a player from the Rams, the better team. The Rams are projected to score roughly 3.5 touchdowns. So we're expecting a bonus of 1750 from FanDuel. But at the same time, we are expecting to lose this from the VIG, right? We're expecting to lose 34.7% on our $25 bet. So we're expecting to lose roughly 870 from the VIG. So we're getting, on average, a $17.50 you know, bonus from FanDuel uh, for the Rams scoring touchdowns, but we're, on average, losing $8.70 to the VIG. So this promotion is profitable still, um, betting blindly into FanDuel's markets for first touchdown scores, but in the EV of this promotion would be a positive $8.80. So every week FanDuel offers this promotion, we'd expect to earn roughly $8.80 over the course of the long run. Um, And what we can do as well is we can compare the FanDuel odds to DraftKings odds when we're selecting the player that we bet on for this specific wager. So um, highlighted in green are the, the players where FanDuel is offering you better odds than DraftKings. So you can see you know, FanDuel's giving you plus 1,800 on Adrian Peterson right here. And DraftKings is only giving you plus 1,200 on Adrian Peterson. So if you're placing a bet on Adrian Peterson to score the first touchdown, you'd obviously much rather do that on FanDuel. And, um, but, you know, Adrian Peterson, he's on the Titans. Same with Ryan Tannehill um, and these other players too. So, these wouldn't be good bets because, again, just placing a bet on a player from the Titans, you're going to lose $5 in expected profit because your expected number of touchdowns goes down from 3.5 to 2.5 because the Titans are the worst team. So we want to bet on a player from the Rams. And we can see Cooper Cup is giving you plus 500, uh, or FanDuel is giving you plus 500, which is the same as DraftKings, and Van Jefferson um, FanDuel is giving you plus 1,200, which is the same as DraftKings. Everything else, for the most part, DraftKings has better odds, which is pretty crazy, but the juice of their market is a lot lower than FanDuel's, so it makes sense. Um, you can see like this Nick Westbrook guy, FanDuel's only giving you plus 1,200, whereas DraftKings is giving you plus 3,500. Um, FanDuel has some pretty awful odds on, on some of these compared to DraftKings markets. So... What we can do is, you know, if this bet, again, this isn't even for the, 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 the Rams-Titans game, it's for the Rams-49ers game, but if it were for the Rams-Titans game, these two players look pretty good to bet on, right? Van Jefferson's on the Rams, FanDuel's giving you the same odds as DraftKings, and Cooper Cup is on the Rams, and FanDuel is giving you the same odds as DraftKings. So these two players would be good uh, betting spots for this specific promotion. And what we can say as well is, you know, if FanDuel is giving me the same odds on DraftKings, then the hold 
percentage I should use in this calculation right here should actually be DraftKings percentage, right? Because the hold of DraftKings market is only 21.22%. So if we're line shopping, right, and we're placing a bet on Cooper Cup or Van Jefferson, where FanDuel's giving me the same odds as DraftKings, the expected profit from this promotion would actually go up to roughly, you know, 1219, which isn't bad, which means, you know, placing a $25 bet, you're expected to turn a profit of 1219. So that's just the math behind um, FanDuel's promotion right here, the first TD bonus. So again, two things to really remember. First, bet on a player from the favored team. So, you know, in this Titans Rams game, um, you would want to bet on, you know, the Rams, right? They're expected to score a whole you know, they're expected to score one more touchdown than the Titans are, which means you're expected to get an additional $5 in bonus from FanDuel. And, you know, so if we look at the Rams 49ers game, let's see if markets have been posted. So the Rams are favorites against the 49ers. So again, you know, it looks like next week, barring no changes, you would prefer to bet a player from the Rams in this specific game. Um, and then the second thing is just line shop, right? You want to make sure you're not getting a terrible price. Nick Westbrook, like nothing is worse than placing a bet at plus 1,200 odds when you realize you could have clicked a tab away and gotten plus 3,500 on DraftKings. So line shop, right? Make sure you're getting at least as good of odds as other sports books. And, you know, again, just doing that should increase the expected value of your promotion by a few dollars. So line shop, um, and compare odds between sports books and make sure you're betting on a player from the favored team. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you, if you have any questions about the math, you can put it in the comments and thanks so much for your time.